The human hand and the horse's mouth. For thousands of years, this was the main form of communication between horse and rider. Let's take a closer look. This communication begins with the human hand. The human hand is truly a miraculous instrument. It can be used for self-expression. It can be used to reach out and connect with another. Hands are used to show support and concern. With our hands, we can create marvelous things, works of art, music, the tiniest and most delicate of instruments. We can build and heal and create things of great use. Our hands are truly astonishing. A lot of the same things can be said about the horse's mouth. It has a great deal of dexterity. They can even pick up one single grain. They explore with it. They kind of make music with it. They can play, reach out to others, clearly show their emotions, express all kinds of ideas. So what does make up the mouth that we're talking about? The parts of the equine mouth that we deal with when we are talking about bits and bidding are the tongue and the bars and the lips. The equine mouth is as sensitive as our fingertips. So wouldn't it make the most sense to make our wishes known before we even get on? Perhaps even on the ground showing them exactly the response that we want from them before we begin to ride. From the ground, we can clearly show the horse through this very sensitive mouth, different neck positions, a clear reaction to the bit by mobilizing the jaw, stretching the neck, rounding the neck, and having a clear understanding of the communication that we seek to find. Afterwards, we can even take this into the walk, showing them to work in a medium position or a long position, affecting the horse's balance and relaxation. It then can become quite easy to change the horse's balance from shoulder to shoulder and even show them some of the lateral movements that they can do later under saddle, all while teaching them about contact, maintaining that lifeline of communication, patiently, quietly, steadily, without dropping the line of communication at any time. The horse and I know exactly what the other wants, because neither one of us has lost that line of communication. Here are some elements of good communication through the reins. The horse and rider can stay in contact with one another in communication. The reins do not droop or swing, and when the rider gives more, the horse will stretch more confidently into the contact. This is a different kind of connection. This horse is coming behind the vertical, not reaching confidently into the contact. Instead of stretching the neck, it's shortening his neck. And you can see that the line of communication 
is regularly interrupted. This horse also lacks relaxation. The horse simply does not reach confidently into the contact. A clear and consistent dialogue between the hand and the mouth helps me to communicate to the horse how I want him to balance through his transitions. I want that line of communication to remain steady and soft. And again, if I give forward, he is confident in going outward to the bit, completely assured that nothing bad will happen to his very sensitive mouth. A different kind of connection again, not steady, not confident, not reaching forward. Again, we can see the clear communication in the transition to the canter. The line of communication remains unbroken and the horse stays in a very nice balance throughout his transitions. This horse's connection is unsteady. The line of communication is constantly interrupted and the horse lacks balance and relaxation. Let's look one last time at the elements of good communication with a steady but light contact, a forward reaching eagerness to seek out the contact and the bit and relaxation throughout. From a higher working position, thinking forward, slightly downward, while helping me to maintain an excellent connection with him. Since our hands are capable of so much, why not learn to use them to communicate respectfully and clearly with our horses?